Uh, good afternoon, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, today, during the Europe Days uh, and the events connected to the launch of the new Erasmus Schools program to 2021-2027, uh, I'm pleased to open the special session dedicated to uh, the Jean Monnet project and namely to the new call for application 2021. I'm honored that this event brings together uh, university representatives from all Eastern Partnership countries. I, and uh, I would like to thank uh, National Erasmus offices uh, in Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Belarus uh, Georgia, and Ukraine for their full support uh, in organizing this event. Thank you very much for this. Uh, so I will be very short in my opening speech in order to give more time for questions and answers. So uh, I'm pleased to give the floor to Antonio Fantiles de Lima, project officer at the EHA, the European Education and Culture Executive Agency. Uh, Antonio, uh, thank you again for your openness to present the novelty of the Jamone project action and answer the question uh, of our participant related to new application form, budget, etc. And you understand this is very, very uh, important for them. And uh, this is the point of this uh, uh, quest, uh, question and answer questions uh, session. And uh, this is our biggest interest, the question and the not only the question, the, the answer. So please, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, good uh, afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Antonio Fontelius. I'm a project officer at uh, the uh, uh, European Education and Culture Executive Agency. And uh, I have been uh, since uh, uh, last year working with the program uh, Jamone, with the Jamone Action, where I am uh, basically responsible for uh, for a portfolio of countries, which include, for instance, uh, uh, Moldova, Ukraine, and uh, Armenia, I uh, will uh, today make uh, a short presentation about uh, the uh, the Jamone action, the the the, the, the historic, the, the 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 current figures, and uh, the mainly the new call, which is already open. And uh, uh, after that, there will be a little be a little uh, questions and answers uh, session. Unfortunately, I have to uh, say that uh, this session will be quite short because uh, due to another appointment, I have to leave at two o'clock uh, in sharp this afternoon. But uh, what I would suggest you do is that uh, uh, would, whichever questions don't get answered today, that uh, you send me them by email. I'll give them an email at the end of the session and I will answer them in uh, written to you in the next days. So you do not need to worry that you not uh, have uh, the answer for your question. Uh, <clears throat> I will start by uh, making my presentation. I'm trying to share my screen. Uh, Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Just okay. make it so, full screen if possible. Yes. I will just do it like this. Um, okay. Uh, Erasmus Action 21, uh, 2027. That's the new uh, multi uh, financial uh, framework. Uh, as I said, this is a bit uh, small presentation about uh, the Jamone from historic to uh, current times. Uh, the Jamone Actions is a network which uh, has been functioning since uh, 1989, uh, which uh, uh, comprises the whole world and which has um, so far uh, printed all, around 6,000 projects uh, in the, all around the world. I have here a few figures from two of the countries participating today, Moldova and Ukraine. Uh, you can see that uh, the, the differences per, per country, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, differences in, uh, in uh, the ratio between uh, projects uh, submitted and projects selected. Uh, I have here Moldova, I have here the new uh, projects from uh, last year, just so that you have an idea about the kinds of, uh, of uh, subjects we deal with. 
uh, here the numbers from uh, Ukraine. Ukraine has uh, over uh, thousand uh, proposals from which uh, more than a hundred have been uh, have been uh, uh, granted over the last uh, years. As you can see, all of these are only projects from Ukraine approved in 2020. I know it's not possible to read it because there are so many of them, but just to have an idea of uh, how big uh, Ukraine is among the partner countries in the Jamoni uh, portfolio. About uh, uh, last selection, we had uh, around 1,500 proposals from which uh, 360 uh, around were selected, which means uh, a rate of more or less 25% of the projects which are approved. So as you can see, it's a highly competitive uh, action. The budget available last year was of 21 million euros. For 2001-2027, uh, uh, which I'm going to talk about now, the new Erasmus program, it still uh, comprises the three main uh, key actions, uh, one, two, and three, learning mobility for individuals, cooperation for innovation and practices, and support for policy reform. And as an action apart, the Jamona actions, which uh, gather a little bit of the three uh, subjects uh, together in relation to European Union studies. Uh, European Union studies, as per the new definition, comprises the study of Europe in its entirety, with a particular emphasis on the EU dimension as an internal, but also from a global perspective. What do we mean about that? Uh, previously, the focus of uh, Jean Monnet was uh, mainly in what you call like the classical subjects, like, uh, like uh, law and economics and uh, political science related to European Union uh, uh, history and, and function, etc. cetera. Uh, nowadays, we have uh, uh, amplified the scope of your studies uh, to the extent that uh, it may vary so long as a new angle is explored. For instance, you can make a proposal talking about uh, uh, the, the European uh, health, uh, uh, the health, European health dimension of, of, of any health policy, which is a subject that in the past wasn't uh, related to the, to the European Union. But as we see now, for instance, to in this moment in this, in this situation of a pandemic, health has become is becoming more and more. Uh, uh, subject to, to, to European Union policies. So that's just one example of uh, uh, ways in which uh, you can apply subjects which relate to your field of, of uh, uh, research of expertise. You just have to try to link them to the, to the pertaining uh, European Union policy which related to the subject. If I'm talking too fast, please let me know. I'm just trying to, to, to focus on the last part. But uh, let me know if I need to, to go more uh, soft. Uh, as of 21, uh, the Jamona actions, we have a new strength. We are going to uh, go on with the actions in the files of higher education institutions, but also a new one in the fields of education and training. Another, uh, uh, another difference is that so we are now working with fixed lump sums and customized lump sums. And uh, we also have uh, done a few uh, review of the award criteria. Let me already say that uh, in regards to partner countries, they are not eligible for the general actions in other fields of education and training. So this part is only for uh, program countries. Partner countries, they remain uh, eligible for general actions in the, in the files of education, uh, higher education institutions. Dear Antonio, sorry to interrupt you. There is a part of the screen which is not seen. Maybe there is. Yes, I was going to say that as well. The part of the screen you, we cannot read. Uh, I will try to then put it uh, back. I have noticed that, but uh, uh, let me see if I can put it in a way that I can. Uh, uh, I think uh, we will uh, we will send uh, your presentation to all participants. So, uh, I, if, okay. it, if, uh, if it is not uh, how to say uh, solved, because to, yeah, because I, I I maybe if I do this, can you see now the whole uh, screen? Uh, not yet. Now it's better. It is better now. Now it's better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's better. Mm -hmm. Sorry about it. I mean, you didn't miss much Very because well. I was reading the the, the parts that you were. That you have, so don't worry. Anyway, uh, Jamone actions for higher education. Uh, 
aims to promote excellence in teaching and research, foster dialogue between academic world and society, to generate knowledge, insights, and support of EU uh, policymaking, reach out to a wider public, and function as a vector for public diplomacy towards partner and third countries. Uh, the the Jamon Actions for Higher Education Institutions, they are for this year modules, chairs, and centers of excellence. We are not dealing this year with uh, projects, networks, and support associations uh, because it has been decided that this year we would also concentrate on this new trend, which for the time being is only available for program countries, but partner countries can still apply for modules, chairs, and centers of excellence. Uh, in the case of modules, uh, they, can be, uh, they can be done by, um, as I said, uh, higher education institutions in any part of the world, duration is still two years, maximum EU contributions of the 3,000 uh, euros, which represents 75% uh, of the total uh, amount of the project, and it's a fixed lump sum. And uh, the, the requirements that uh, there should be a minimum of 40 teaching hours per academic year. Some courses are allowed. These are studies offered at a higher education institution concentrating on one particular discipline or in European studies or the multidisciplinary approach, therefore, a call upon the academic input of several professors and experts. Chairs. Chairs are teaching posts with a specialization in European Union studies for university professors. The duration is also three years. The maximum EU contribution in this case is of 50,000 uh, euros. Uh, it's also 75% of the total amount. It's also fixed lump sum. In this case, the minimum amount of teaching hour has to be of uh, 90 hours. Centers of excellence. Centers of excellence are focal points of competence and knowledge on European Union subjects, gathering expertise and competences of high level experts, aiming to develop synergies between various disciplines and resources in European studies, as well as creating joint transnational activities. Duration, also three years, maximum EU contribution, 100,000, which in this case is 80% of the total. And uh, uh, this case, this is something, uh, it is not correct to see a fixed lump sum, but it's actually a customized lump sum. I will explain to you in a while uh, what is the difference. This is something new uh, in this uh, new Jamun action. And uh, there should be only one center of excellence per time by, uh, uh, the higher education institution. As I was saying, the funding mechanisms, that's, uh, that's something new uh, as of this year. They will focus on the outputs rather than the inputs, and the emphasis will be on the quality and level of achievements of measurable objectives. Fixed lump sums, they are still available for modules and chairs, and they will be up to 70% of European Union co-financing. So the applicant will have to co-finance up to 25% of, uh, <clears throat> of the project. A customized lump sum, which uh, in the case of partner countries applies to the centers of excellence, it will reach up to 80% of uh, the total amount of the project. So 20% will be co-financed by, uh, by the, the beneficiary. And uh, it is a calculation made uh, uh, between uh, the, a detailed uh, budget, which will be calculated by the applicant in real costs, and uh, these real costs will be then uh, summed up by the by the uh, experts doing the evaluation by work package to turn into a customized lump sum per project, which will then be made available to the applicants. I will get back to that uh, soon. So as I say, uh, modules and chairs, grant calculation, fixed lump sums. The core text includes tables displaying total lump sums per country corresponding to the total number of teaching hours. Applicants request an application predefined amount of single lump sum as indicated in the call tables. Amounts provided in tables indicate final eligible EU contribution. So in this case, we, you, you just do as in previous years, you, you have a number of uh, teaching hours and according to the number of teaching hours, you will receive a fixed amount of a, of a lump sum, which is defined already in the program guide in the tables that you might have seen. You might have seen these tables um, in the case 
of uh, the countries uh, I'm talking to today, if you fall under this category or the countries, and here you see the number of uh, uh, teaching uh, hours in the three years period, and you see the amounts they vary until uh, they reach uh, amount of either 30 of either or of either 50 in the case of modules and uh, chairs. This uh, fixed lump sums, they will, they will anyway uh, be used to fund all the costs related to the project. So the, the, the calculation by teaching hours is just a, a way of calculating the, the lump sums. Uh, it's it's actually not necessary that uh, all the hours uh, spent, all the hours calculated are actually uh, teaching hours. You have to make sure that the minimum of teaching hours is applied, but uh, the amount anyway will be used to uh, to all costs related to the to the project. In the case of centers of excellence. Uh, I have to explain uh, the, how the system of custom, customized lump sums uh, will work. So the core rules, the amount of single lump sum contribution determined for each grant based on this estimated budget proposal by the applicant. The granting authority will fix lump sum per grant based on the proposal, evaluation result, funding rates, and maximum grant amount set in coal. Details, budget presented as detailed and coherent pack work packages. So for each work package, you will calculate the, 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 the budget for each package. And uh, based on this, on this calculation that you have done, the evaluation will be made. And uh, this, this calculation will be either uh, entirely accepted or maybe changes will be proposed. And then after, we have the final numbers based on these final numbers per work package we will define a customized lump sum per project. So that means that actually the amount, yeah, the, the, the final amount of the lump sum will uh, differ from one project to another according to the fixed costs that they have uh, uh, applied for during the application. The activities for each work package must be outlined in detail. Applicants must provide a breakdown of estimated costs showing the share per work package. And the costs remain uh, staff, travel, subsistence, equipment, subcontracting, and orders. The award criteria, award criteria for 2001, 2027, the relevance of the project, quality of the project design and implementation, quality of the partnership and cooperation arrangements, and uh, impact, dissemination, and sustainability. Uh, there are slight differences between modules, chairs, and centers of excellence. Uh, depending on the number of points that uh, that uh, they have to uh, score in each criteria, this information you can also find on the program guide. Uh, you see a maximum 25, 25, 25 per uh, each. Uh, relevance of the project. Number one, meets the objectives of the Jamone action, which I have already explained uh, uh, earlier in this presentation. And the extent to the proposal reach the priority target groups, which are higher education students on European Union studies, higher education students who do not automatically come into contact with EU studies, or for example, partner countries, the potential to enhance EU public diplomacy. So this has to be also uh, the potential that the project has to. Aceasta ar trebui să fie un potențial pentru proiectul nostru. Sorry. Excuse me. I think this is a technical uh, moment with the translation. Oh, okay. Should I go on? Yeah, yes, yes, sorry. Okay, no problem. Um, quality of the project design and implementation. The uh, methodology. Uh, Methodology, management, coherence, and monitoring. Methodology, management, coherence, and monitoring, and evaluation of strategy. Okay. Now we will discuss the quality of the project. I have noticed, I'm just trying to stop. Victoria, I'll just clip the clip and I'll read the translator. Just one second, it's a technical moment. Okay. 
Okay, um, I don't know what to do now. This is up to you guys. Okay, um, no problem. I'll let you know when we are ready. <coughs> we are ready now. Sorry for that. Uh, okay. No, you are not. No, it's not. It's not okay. Now we are not interpreter at all. Um, I'm not talking yet. So. Okay. Uh, uh, so Olga, acum am făcut și pe trebuie să fim doi interpreți, dar văd că nu este nimeni interpret acum. Aha, este doar Victoria, dar eu? Sunteți ambele. Nu, no, se, aude, no. se aude toată interpretarea, chiar dacă noi nu trebuie să auzim. Nu, eu nu sunt, deja am ascuns. Eu mă uit în lista de participanți, eu sunt simplu participant. Noi putem să fim doi. Maybe we could try again. It should work now, maybe. Because so, I've yes. seen the... Uh, that, that. Can I go on? Uh, Please try. Yes. yes, try, try. Okay. I will go slower. Yeah. Uh, quality of Sorry. partnership and cooperation agreements. So, for instance, excellent, excellent profile and expertise of shareholder in your opinion and studies. Profile and expertise of shareholder and key staff involved. Evidence of the level of experience and research you uh, studies. I had gotten asked a question today about the uh, the format for the curriculum vitae. Uh, there is no specific format, so it's a free uh, free format as of this year. Impact dissemination sustainability. Uh, the impact, the expected impact of the project by having long lasting effects. Dissemination and communication, disseminating the outcomes of the activities within and outside institutions raising awareness of projects and results, reaching out to groups outside the higher education institutions, transferability and translation to new policies, extent to which the dissemination tools will reach the target audience, sustainability and continuation. This is one very important award criteria that is often neglected and that's a pity because it's just as important as all the others. So I would, uh, I would recommend you to take particular attention to this, uh, to this point of impact dissemination and sustainability. Indicative roadmap, uh, as I said, uh, the deadline, as far as, I, as, far as, as we know, is still the 2nd of June. We are not working at the moment with a possibility of extension. The evaluation period will happen throughout the summer of 2021. Notification of results to applicant, they will happen more or less by the end of the year which means that you are faced with the following situation. Uh, if you are planning to start uh, in, uh, in September of this year, you have from one side the advantage that uh, your project will be ready to start when it gets the financing, and the financing in this case will be retroactive, but you take the very high risk that uh, if you don't get the the the, the, the grants, you, you have already started your project and you don't have the money to fund it. So it's, it's, it's risky. Another option is to start the project uh, during the academic year, so not in September, but basically, for instance, in January, which is not uh, optimal, but in relation to the timing for the, for the call this year, it's a more a safer bet in the sense that you, you only start your, your project once you are uh, aware of the results, or the other possibility is to start it only in September of 2022, which is also okay if you prefer to do so. So you have to take care when you apply to, to this point, because uh, uh, we have to face this year a delay in the approval of the Mochin of uh, Financial Framework, which caused a delay in the approval of the Erasmus program guide, which causes a delay in the approval of the Geomana action, which causes a delay in the call. So everything is delayed this year, and that's the situation we have to deal with for 2021. The uh, amount available is uh, 10 million. It's uh, 4 million, I think it's 4 million for chairs, 4 million for modules, and 2 million for, for, for centers of excellence. I believe it's something like this. Uh, the details are needed anyway in the application form. And as I said, as of this year, we are using uh, e-grants. 
which means that in the application, not only the application, but also the whole management of the project will be done uh, online, uh, not only by us, but also by the beneficiaries themselves. Here, I give uh, a few tips for a successful application. Demonstrate clearly uh, sustainable results in benef benefit of all actors. Remember what I have said before, that uh, we will focus even uh, budget-wise in the outputs and the outcomes rather than on the inputs. We want to see what the results of the project will be. So make sure that, that you have that very clear in your application. Count with a clear institutional support from the organization. So make sure that uh, you, uh, you as the project coordinator, that you are really uh, fully backed by the, by the institution you are uh, representing. Be ready to start as soon as the call results are published. This point, as I said to you, uh, you have these three options that I just men mentioned. So, you know, you have to, to take either the, the risky, but uh, 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 from the eyes of, of the evaluator, maybe better, but it's the riskiest, or take the one which may be less attractive, but it's more safe, which is in September, or maybe go for a, mid -term, for a midway which is starting in the middle of the academic year, which I know is not optimal for you guys, but uh, having seen the delays we have to deal with, it might be the most realistic uh, uh, option at the moment. Please make sure that you have clear, complete, concrete, concise, and coherent proposals. Don't leave any, uh, let us say, loose ends or untied knots. Make sure that everything is included in the proposal. Count with the active participation of all team members. So if you have uh, 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 five team, uh, team members, make sure that, uh, that you, in the application that you describe how they all will participate in the project, not that there's just uh, one project coordinator you know, taking care of everything and uh, the other members are just, uh, uh, just uh, as, as figurants. Uh, you should make sure to, to if, if, you, if you have a team member that they have an active participation in the in the project. Here I have a, a screenshot of uh, the funding portal. So when you go there, uh, you have to choose for the Erasmus uh, program, and then you you get a list of all the. You can see like you can click on view, and you get the, all the open uh, calls, and you see that our calls, they are already, uh, they are available for uh, submission of applications. Here I have a few useful links, a link to the tender in the opportunity portal. I have uh, a link to the platform where you can look for information about the previous projects and project results to get stuff maybe inspired about uh, how to, to, to construct your, your project. And uh, here the, uh, the mailboxes are not only the functional mailboxes, but uh, mine, I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for Ukraine, Moldova and Armenia. My colleague, uh, Raluca Yagar, she's responsible for Georgia and Belarus. And my colleague, uh, Maria Victoria, she's responsible for Azerbaijan. So if you have uh, any uh, questions that I might not be able to answer today, I would just recommend you to send it to me on written and uh, or to my colleagues and uh, we will answer to you in written as soon as possible. That's the end of my presentation. Thank so, you very much, uh, Antonio. Thank you very much to be so clear and to try uh, to trying to uh, answer already some, some of our questions. Uh, which was sent uh, to you before the, the, the seventh. So uh, I think we'll proceed to other questions. Uh, and uh, we have uh, already a, a list of uh, 10 questions. I will, start, I will start with those uh, dedicated to the budget uh, uh, calculation. So one, uh, pre uh, I think uh, you have already mentioned in your presentation, but uh, in order to be very clear, for Ramone module and chairs, do participants need to fill in the detailed budget tables 
or this is uh, these detailed budget tables are all uh, only for uh, center of um, excellence. Okay, I mean, I received this uh, question uh, this yeah. afternoon, and uh, I wasn't sure uh, if uh, you had uh, really understood because when you say detailed budget, I wasn't sure if you saying detailed budget per work package or not. If you mean detailed budget per work package, this only relates to centers of excellence. It does not relate to modules and chairs. Mm -hmm. If you mean detailed budget in the sense that you distribute the teaching hours uh, by, by you know, the people participating, then that's just a detailed budget as any other one. But, uh, but it's not the one applicable to, uh, to centers of excellence. The centers of excellence is the one that you have to define per work package on a real cost basis. Mm -hmm. we thank you very much. We have some uh, questions, even those questions uh, which were sent by Lana to you uh, on the budget. And uh, I, I will uh, just, uh, how to say... Uh, um, I, have, I have a few uh, of uh, them uh, here. Yeah. I, have, I have them here on my, on, my, uh, on my other screen, so I can already answer of these yeah, questions. The first was, question. Mm -hmm. The first question uh, about uh, to uh, when the grant will be paid. Uh, you will re we still receive a pre-financing, okay? Uh, what the, the, the program guide says that according to the lump sum scheme, the lump sum for work package will be paid only when the entire work package has been completed. What it means is only that you will receive the full amount of the grants if the whole package is completed. Otherwise, there will be a deduction on the final balance. So you will still receive the, the, the pre-financing. And then on the final balance, when you receive the final balance at the end of the project, we will check if all the work packages were fully completed. And if they were not fully completed, then there will be either a deduction or a recovery order, depending on how is the, the, the level of completion of the work packages. But you will still receive the... the the pre-financing at the beginning of the project. So don't worry about that. Uh, this uh, pre-finance, it is uh, how many percent of, of all sum, or th this is a lump sum uh, of the budget? How, how, how it is? Uh, yes, Parviz. The lump sum is, uh, 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 as I said to you, it's, it's, it's uh, either up to 30,000 or up to 50,000 in the case of uh, modules and, 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 uh, and chairs, that's, that's the maximum. And this maximum corresponds to 75% of, uh, of the total amount. So mm -hmm. the, 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 the other 25% will have to be from the university on co-funding, okay? Um, regarding the... The, the amount of the pre-financing, I'm not so sure at the moment if, if it's still the same as, as before or if it has changed. Uh, but it usually varies between uh, 70, 80 or, or 90, depending on the project. So uh, if you want, I can uh, check this information and send to you later to be specific about uh, how much it is. Mm -hmm. But it's anyway something between 70 and, uh, and uh, 90, so. Yeah. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Welcome. I, I think this is clear. Yes, Parviz, you have a- just, just a very short question, Antonio, regarding the lump sums and the, the novelty introduced uh, for the ceilings of up to which amount the, they, they can receive for chairs, for instance, and models from the uh, partner countries. What I can see now is uh, when you said that there are 10 million available under this call, is that uh, the, the average of, uh, of, of funding received per project from our countries at least goes down significantly because now to be eligible for full funding under chair for instance uh, the applicant need to have at least 750 teaching hours in the project while for instance in other countries for instance as saudi arabia uh, for them it's it's uh, to receive the same this amount of funding 90 hours would be enough so are we expecting more projects from these countries or how the distribution will be made because this is really worrying us Okay, you see, you, see mean, what I, you, you see what I mean, though, right? Yes, I know what you mean. I mean, it is true that uh, unfortunately the budget uh, for the Erasmus program had to be reduced as of this year because, among others, because of Brexit. Uh, so there was a substantial uh, cut in the budget from uh, from uh, from what happened uh, last year. So everything had had to be uh, 
a bit turned down. Uh, the calculation of the amounts they are they are related to the to the to the basically to the cost of cost of, of, of expenses by country. Okay, so I mean the amounts for Saudi Arabia are higher, not because we want to give more money to Saudi Arabia, but just because the the costs of, of expenses there the costs there are higher than in Ukraine or Moldova. But having this in mind. Uh, they have calculated in a way that said they are more or less uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, purchase parity, they, they are more or less uh, equitative per country. It is true that uh, in all cases, uh, in order to reach the, the full amount, you will have to, to, to have larger projects. This is, this is also true. But on much the other larger, hand, much yeah, larger. But, yeah, but on the other hand, this also uh, helps uh, organizations which uh, which are not able to 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 implement uh, very big projects, but which still are will be able to get the financing with a smaller project. You have to take into consideration that uh, the 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 competitive of this call is very high. So uh, we just want to make sure that uh, there is a chance for everybody. So uh, thank you for your explanation, Antonio. Uh, I think uh, uh, we, we could proceed to the question too from the um, received from Lana uh, in order to, to explain very clearly uh, how to proceed with the budget preparation. Uh, what is the co correlation between the automatically calculated lump sum uh, based on the number of teaching hours and the amount that identified and the detailed form. Uh, so uh, should the amounts in the detailed budget table be distributed within the available lump sum that was automatically calculated or should they be calculated independently from the lump sum? That's the what I was telling before. Level? That's what yeah. I was telling before. I mean, it depends on what you mean by detail package, detail yeah. budget. If you mean detail budget by work package, this only applies to centers of excellence. This does mm -hmm. not apply to modules and chairs. So mm -hmm. please make sure to, to, to separate these two things. Mm -hmm. If you're calling, if you're selling detailed budget, just the distribution of teaching hours uh, per, per, you know, per, per teachers and per, and per amounts, et cetera. I mean, this is just following the, the tables which are already published in program guide. You basically see that uh, for each uh, uh, tranche of, of hours, there is a specific uh, total lump sum. So you just have to, to divide this lump sum by the number of, uh, of teaching hours, by the number of teachers, just like in previous years. So there's not much change about this in this sense. Mm -hmm. uh, another question, thank you. Uh, another question uh, is, um, I think is um, uh, for uh, Jean Monnet module and chairs. In the Jean Monnet action, there is uh, teaching and uh, research activities. Mm. Uh, shall the participant have two separate working packages, or one for teaching, another for uh, the research? Uh, so, how, uh, how to uh, organize these work packages? If you have some, uh, uh, how to say, um, explanation on the uh, content of uh, work packages, what, what it is expected. Um, I mean, as I said, as I said, again, like the, the work packages uh, per work, uh, the detailed budget per work packages, they do not apply to modules and chairs. Mm -hmm. And the calculation by teaching hours only applies to modules and chairs. So we're talking about different things there. Okay, yeah. there's one thing, which is the budget for modules and chairs, which is calculated by the number of teaching hours. And the number of teaching hours is just a reference. It's not necessarily that all these hours will have to be teaching hours, provided that, the, that the, the minimum amount of teaching hours is respected, like 90 in the case of, uh, of chairs and 40 in the case of, of modules. I mean, you have uh, 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 the freedom to use the, 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 the total amount of the lump sum to cover all expenses of the project, because we understand that uh, the, the costs, they are related to the production of those teaching hours, and that they wouldn't happen if you don't have the materials for it. So uh, uh, 
the reference teaching hours is just is just a way to calculate the budget. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the case of uh, of uh, I see uh, Miss Johnny uh, from Georgia. She wants to to talk. I've seen. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you. If you're talking about uh, uh, the work packages, the detailed budget for work packages for the centers of excellence, then this will be on a real cost base. And then at, at the end of this calculation, the experts will analyze the, the application and based on the total amounts, there will be fixed uh, customized lump sums per each project. This is basically just a way to simplify the, the, the uh, 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 assessment of the reports at the end of the project because we, are ha we have each year an increasing number of, of, of projects. And so basically we just don't have the, 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 the work, of, uh, you know, the, the main force to, to deal with it. So we're just trying to simplify the work. Once you have the lump sum, that, that's, that's a fixed amount. So uh, you get the amount and, and you use it, uh, you know, the way it best suits you, provided all work practices are complete. Uh, thank you. Lika, uh, please. Um, yes, thank you. Since you mentioned the uh, reporting period afterwards, I mean, uh, I'm coming, from, I want to go back to the modules and chairs only, and we are talking the lump sum. So theoretically, is it possible that different universities from the same partner country will calculate, let's say, cost of each teaching hour differently, depending on what of additional cost they have to cover from this lump sum? Because previously it was kind of fixed. Uh, how what was the ceiling of uh, reimbursement per one teaching hour now we don't have this ceiling so and i hope this won't create any problems uh, while assessing the projects because you might have projects from different universities of the same country who have the same lump sum but when they start implementing they might pay different amount to their professors because they have to cover different other costs from the same lump sum. So uh, will it be clear for everybody there or not? Because I'm a bit confused with this approach. Uh, I mean, if, 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 you, if you think uh, 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 on, on the other way, uh, actually uh, the lump sum, it's just a simplification of the old method. In the old method, you would calculate the, the number of teaching hours per, per teacher and you get a, uh, that, uh, that amount and then you had the percentage over it. Basically what we are doing now is that we're saying uh, from, from 50 hours to, to, to 100 hours, you get a fixed amount. And this fixed amount you can use as you wish for the implementation okay. of the project. So uh, it, may, it actually makes your life easier. Because Which means that we have flexibility of reimbursing the pro professors under this model. Okay, yes. and, uh, and once an additional small question, I mean, in the application form, when we have to upload the documents, you know, part B, CVs, uh, budget, etc., there is other annexes. So what could be other annexes? I mean, uh, I already got questions, could it be recommendation letter or what, what could it be? Uh, unfortunately, I cannot answer this question yet because this is an ongoing issue. I told you in the beginning oh. of this presentation that there were still ongoing issues with the application okay. and uh, for which uh, we don't still have the answer. Uh, so if we leave it empty, it's not a problem if you don't have any additional annexes. For the moment, I would you, say You no. cannot leave it empty. Yeah. But I, I don't think you can leave it empty because the system will not validate it then. We tried that. So um, that's, that's <laughs> why I'm saying I don't have an answer to this question at the moment because okay. uh, we have already received this question from other people and uh, there's no clarity about it. We need to answer to, to receive the answer from the GIAC and uh, we are still waiting. So I'm very uh, sorry about it. Well, uh, A few questions that I would not be able to answer you. today. That's what I'm saying. Please send to me in written. You have my email ready. Okay, and now you answer as soon as I have the answer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. While we are on these uncertainties and delays, I still get questions from our audiences saying, will there be a, 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 an extension to the deadline? Will there be? So there is absolutely no chance for the, for the extension. And I can see from the chat from other countries, people are asking as well, given that there's been delays and there's still a lot I, of uncertainties and everything. I, I didn't, doing... okay. I didn't say that uh, there will absolutely not be an extension. Ah, okay. I said that for the time being, we are not expecting, expecting. Any, any delay, any, any extension. 
what I can say that uh, we, we would really appreciate if we could have some because there are still uh, a lot true. of questions. <laughs> which true. It is true that it is true. It is true that there's, there's been a lot of question marks, and people are having, uh, you know, with all, all the all the difficulties trying to apply. Honestly. Yeah, but at least you'll be able to, you know, you'll be able to send your applications, and you can go holidays. Yeah. Where we'll spend all the summer working. I know, I know, I know, I know. I will well. have summer holidays this year. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Thank. Uh. Uh, so um, another question uh, is, uh, we have some questions uh, uh, and I think uh, we will have uh, more questions on uh, Jean Monnet module and chairs. Uh, so um, uh, again, uh, the work packages are uh, dedicated uh, mostly to the uh, center of excellence. Yes. So this is this is the idea, but uh, uh, the, those who write uh, uh, proposals with Jamane module and chairs, they uh, could apply without uh, presenting uh, the description of work packages. This is right. Uh, so far as I, as I've as I've known, so far as I've been informed, just before this 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 meeting, uh, yes. But as I said to you at the moment, nothing is uh, of, of very, very little things are 100% true. So if there is anything changes, I'll, I'll, I'll inform. But for the time being, what I can say is work packages, uh, uh, detailed budget per work packages, they only apply to centers of excellence. They do not apply to modules and chairs. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is the uh, Antonio, uh, the question from Armenia. Uh, we ask about the online application system. There are some documents, part B budget uh, mentioned with the red dots and documents with CV and previous projects, etc., with green dots. Huh? Uh, just to understand, is that mandatory uploaded uh, documents with green dots or it should be mandatory to upload with red dots? <laughs> what, what to do with, the, with those two dots, two types of dots? Okay, to be honest, I haven't seen the application online yet, so please let me know which, which exactly you're telling me, so then I can tell you if it's mandatory or not. One thing I can say, like you had asked me about the CVs, about the, the format, it's free format uh, uh, at the moment. Uh, someone had uh, asked me from the Netherlands, they had asked me about the declarations of honor. The declarations of honor are actually only be asked after the, the uh, selection phase, only to the selected uh, 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 applicants, but uh, as I said again, I, I'm not at this moment in a position to tell you specifically which uh, which uh, documents need to be uh, uh, need to be need to be attached to those uh, on those uh, on those fields. And yeah, I know it sounds weird, but uh, and it's also very weird for us to be in a situation like this. But uh, the, the problem is that sometimes we are depending on. Uh, the the reviews from uh, from the, the legal services and uh, they are very delayed on their work so there are many many uh documents which haven't been uploaded yet because we do not have yet the final versions so that's why i can't give full answers sometimes so i'm sorry about that but please send me a written your question and uh, we will answer to you as soon as i have the uh, fear a firm answer Okay, and another question concerning the uh, the list of previous uh, uh, projects, which are already implemented, implemented by the applicant, by whom? The implemented institution by, or by the institution, by the institution, implemented by the institution, mm -hmm. okay? Any other projects already implemented by institution. And uh, you had also asked about uh, uh, the, the participants, uh, the participants, we understand in principle as other uh, uh, per institution, okay? Uh, another question that you had uh, sent to me, uh, when the application forms will be available, I've never already said, I mean, that's, that's been a bit of a mess for us. I'm sorry about that. Uh, the budget, uh, if, if, what's the legal force of detailed budget table? Uh, well, the thing is, the final version of the budget is part of the grant agreement. So the final version of the budget will be legally enforceable. But in the application phase, uh, and especially in the case of, uh, for instance, centers of excellence, because we're dealing with customized lump sums, uh, there will be uh, the possibility of some uh, proposed changes, okay? 
so uh, the the budget uh, applied might not be the same as the budget uh, confirmed. The budget confirmed is legally enforceable. The budget applied not necessarily. Okay. Thank you, Antonio. Uh, I think I uh, see Svetlana with the uh, raised hand. I think this is the question which is in uh, already in the, our chat. Svetlana, uh, you can tell. The, yes, the thanks. Thanks a lot. So thank you, Antonio, for the presentation and the, the questions uh, sessions and the question from Ukraine from one university uh, about the criteria partnership and cooperation. Does it mean that applicant must have partners or a partner? And if yes, then from which countries? Thank you very much. Okay, you, you do not need to have partners. Okay, uh, but it's of course always interesting if you have them. Uh, from which countries? There's no rule on that. Uh, it's it's basically up to up to. Of course, it's uh, the more. It depends on, on the kind of project. I mean, if you're going to make a, a project about uh, a European Union policy on, on on the Eastern Partnership, then it's interesting interesting to have other you know other, other countries involved, uh, partners from other countries involved. If you have uh, a, a project on uh, a certain kind of U European Union policy, then it would be interesting to have uh, program countries involved. If you're going to make a, 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 a project about uh, European uh, foreign policy, then maybe it would be interesting to have countries from all around the world. It depends on the, on the project that you have. Okay, And as I said, it's not necessary, it's not mandatory, but it's always, it, it looks beautiful in the picture. Thank you very much. So there is no changes since the, the previous call in this matter of the partnership. No, really. no. Thank you. I'm sorry. Another question is uh, about uh, the work pa packages uh, for the Center of Excellence. Uh, uh, the question is about uh, how many uh, work packages must be uh, in, the, in an application and how I, I understand the, that uh, you cannot uh, tell exactly how many, but uh, maybe to explain uh, uh, if the applicant uh, is, uh, how to say, free to, to, to organize his application as uh, he wish or... Uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, you would need to have at least five, which are those five main uh, budget headings for staff and and, and equipment and uh, I mean I've told about it in the in the in the, uh, the presentation. So those those five budget main had, uh, budget headings, I would say there would be one for one for each. But uh, you have uh, based on that, you are uh, you are free to have more more working packages if you want to. No problem. You can have one just for dissemination, one just for sustainability, one for I mean in fact the most the more detailed your project is, the better. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, uh, I saw a question about the Great Britain. Great Britain is not a member of the Erasmus program anymore. So, no, unfortunately. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Paradis, please. Uh, Antonio, another question about the team members. While preparing the module uh, of Jean Monnet, could um, the, within the team uh, could be a, a professor from outside of the targeted university? And also a team member as a, for example, master degree student. It can be from another university, it's not a problem. It can be also from a master, de a master uh, degree. Of course, that the preference is given to, 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 to holders of PhDs. So you have less chances if you are dealing with, uh, with uh, people with master degrees. That's just the way it is. But it's not, it's not an impediment. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, I don't see, I don't know. Uh, 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 Parviz, uh, do you have a question? I saw you has uh, hand raised. I don't see Parviz already. Yes, yes, I, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I just had a problem with one device. I switched to another. That's why I can share the video. I have a question. Uh, to Antonio regarding the Jean Monnet uh, projects uh, that we had in the past. 
Uh, are we going to have them, uh, as it was mentioned somewhere, when is that going to be possibility okay. for a plane? Good question. Uh, we, are, we expect that we will have them back in the future, but uh, we do not know yet when, because this will depend on, uh, on how uh, the, the, the new trend on the high schools will be developed. What I can say, and also on the on the agency's capacity to to manage these uh, projects. I mean, the, the, the agency is supposed we are supposed to increase our manpower over the next years, but uh, for the time being, uh, we have uh, we are already so overloaded that uh, it would be impossible for us to 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 to, go to, to give uh, like a, a, to even answer questions to our applicants if we had to deal with our projects with all uh, actions. So uh, the, the Jamoni projects, networks, and uh, support to, uh, to associations, they, are, they were not available this year, and they are in principle not yet available in 2022. They might be available as of 2023. That's the position that we have at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Antonio. I uh, think... Uh, uh, we have answered uh, the the most of the questions. I think maybe uh, uh, please, Svetlana. I have a very small question. Is there any preferences to the newcomers this school to be funded? Uh, not really. Uh, there's no preference to anybody. We we don't work like this. The preferences on the best on the best applications. Mm -hmm. But as I said to you, I mean, since since uh, there will be different different uh, uh, tranches of funding per, per number of hours. I mean, it, this, this means that also small projects also have chances to be, to be selected. That's what I can say. Uh, so uh, I think uh, this is um, uh, most of the questions uh, which we have uh, received. Uh, uh, this is another question. In previous application, there was a character's limit for each block. Uh, for example, 3,000 uh, uh, character per block. It is not applicable anymore. The orientation is I just- think it's, uh, I think it's 4,000 per block, no? No? Yeah, 1,000, yeah, pardon. 4,000, I think it's 4,000, yeah. yeah. Uh, the orientation is just uh, 40, 000, uh, 40 pages. Oh, that I do not, sorry. I would have to check. <laughs> I know it's 44,000 40, 40, characters that I remember. Yeah, that's it. Because, uh, yeah, go on. Uh, I'm also dealing with another call at the same time. I'm dealing with the designated institutions calls, which is happening at this very moment. So I'm, I'm dealing with, two, two, with all the calls. I'm very busy. So uh, I also have this on top. So, but I will come back to you with all the questions that I wasn't able to answer today. That's for sure. Don't worry about that. Uh, There's one more so question from Lana. Antonio, a uh, very short question about Center of Excellence. Uh, uh, how many partners could be envisaged uh, into, into the establishing of Center? I mean, yes. how, what, what will be the team, or it could be also some partners from outside of the targeting institution? Can be, there can be partners from outside the institution. I mean, the, 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 the grant is still one of the beneficiary, but you can have partners from other institutions. Yes, I mean, for, for us, they're, they're not considered as, as beneficiaries. The beneficiary will be still uh, your institution, but uh, your institution can have agreements with other partners, with other universities, which, which might uh, work together on the, on, the, on the center of excellence. This is, this, and there's no limit for that. Thank you. So, uh, thank you, Antonio. I know you uh, you must leave, you should leave for another meeting, and yes. Lana also. I thank you very much for uh, for your time if, and for your openness to to answer our question. I'm sure our participants have another uh, ten and ten uh, questions for the future, and uh, thank you for. Uh, um, showing your mailbox, uh, and I, I'm sure you will have uh, uh, other other questions uh, in the future. Uh, so uh, thank you, thank you very much. No problem. As I repeat, uh, you can always uh, any questions that I haven't been able to answer uh, today. Please send to me in written. Send you can send to my 
to my personal email. In what regards uh, as a, a, a mode of uh, Ukraine and uh, Armenia, how you answered them myself. In what regards uh, Georgia, Azerbaijan and Belarus, are you sent to my colleagues as they are the, the responsible ones and they will answer to you. But, yes, uh, our, we'll our experience sure. with Maria Victoria was always very fruitful. So she's always helpful and thank you. Yes. Th thanks to all your team. We call her the encyclopedia of the Zomone actions because she's the one who's been there for the longest. So. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say she's been there for ages. <laughs> she's there for 14 years already. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I do have to go now. I'm very sorry about that. But as I say, feel free to contact me at any time and I'll be happy to help in any way I can. Okay. Uh, thank you, and uh, I hope uh, you will uh, receive uh, many, many applications, even uh, without the, the moved uh, deadline. Please do so. I hope uh, that you will be able to, to send uh, successful applications. Uh, and I wish, uh, I mean, I've been also working for, uh, for a year already now uh, with uh, your region. I find uh, it's a very interesting uh, region to work with. Uh, it's, it's for me, uh, almost an honor because uh, I deal with one of the most one of the most important portfolios, and it's it's a pleasure for me to to help you guys in which way I can. And it's fun. Sometimes I delay uh, my answers it's just because I'm really overloaded with work, but not because uh, I haven't uh, got the interest to help you. So make sure be sure that uh, I'll be always there for you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Ciao. bye. Ciao. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, uh, um, we have not uh, so many questions in the chat. I think uh, all the questions uh, at, uh, at the moment uh, have been answered. So uh, how do you think maybe we, we could um, uh, how to say, close the session? The yes. Uh, so uh, my, uh, um, if it is uh, the case, and I see that it, it is, uh, I know this is uh, for many of us uh, is uh, the holidays. And thank you uh, to, to participating in this session today. Uh, uh, today and tomorrow, because uh, um, we in Neo Moldova organize tomorrow also uh, events, and I know all the Neo are very, very, um, uh, how to say, active, and they organize already uh, also different uh, events in the, your countries. So uh, I will close this session uh, now, and uh, I wish to all participants, very, very participants, uh, very, very. Uh, successful uh, application and uh, to all our country to have many, many selected projects, Jamone project. Thank you very much, Claudia. I appreciate all your help and all your support with this. I just want to share very, very, very shortly. Today, tomorrow is the Holy Ramadan holiday. So Eid Mubarak to all the Muslims and everybody here. And uh, it was great to see everybody. Uh, so uh, thank you, Parviz, and uh, how to say uh, how how we should uh, 